I'm Matt Bronger. This might help. I am not a doctor. This might help. I'm not a professional. Let's have fun. This honestly is a good time. I'm Matt Bronger. This might help the podcast. Hey guys, welcome to This Might Help with Matt Bronger, the advice podcast that doesn't know why it gives advice. Uh, today I have a... Uh, uh, an old friend, somebody I've known uh, uh, quite a few years here in the in the comedy scene in uh, in uh, Los Angeles, and um, they're one of the funniest people I know and uh, most humblest too, which is cool. It's a nice combination. Uh, everybody, River Butcher. Oh, River, how Matt, are you? Stop, stop, Matt. Come stop. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm good, but I just I literally just got a text from the daycare that uh, my daughter is having like a little runny nose oh, and stuff, no. and so Better go I, catch like, it, Matt. It's one. Of, <laughs> look, I've had COVID. She's had COVID. My wife's had COVID. Your we're, daughter's we're had COVID. Oh my she god! Did, yeah, dude, she so had sorry. no symptoms. No symptoms. It was just yeah. tested her and just watched oh. her and nothing. So like, but and then came out of it. You know, we've tested. Yeah. We've tested her because you there was a COVID scare at the daycare uh the uh, like let's say uh beginning of last week and so we had to pull her out and she was fine and yeah. she just caught some weird bugs i've tested her three times in the last four days leading up to daycare and now she's you know it's just one of those How's things it? where even even if there wasn't uh like uh, a covid scare if your yeah. kid's sick you got to get your kid Absolutely, that's like yeah. the, that's like the rule so i'm just that like that is the rule uh, you but know it, that should be the rule for everybody <laughs> for real <laughs> but, yeah you know <laughs> yeah under that's a normal healthcare like, system all of a, of a sudden they're like yeah no we're going back to how it used to be which is you just work when you're sick yeah that's what just we, give it to everybody <laughs> yeah. don't go yeah, home you just work through illness until you yeah and it's like this thing where she was kind of showing you know, she was coughing a little bit it's like i would i didn't i i didn't drop off a petri dish this morning right you know yeah. so it's just like all right it's it's a pain in the ass like my wife and i just exchanged a look like fuck yeah this but like so I'll watch her. I've watched yeah. her the last two weeks. It's, Keep an eye on it. It ain't easy. Well, it's <laughs> yes. more just like she doesn't get to go to daycare. Right. I don't get yeah, to get yeah. anything done. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, Fatherhood. and I'm mostly, and I'll swear to God, I'll stop venting. The, the biggest oh. thing for me is that, like, I feel so f bad because she loves daycare. She loves the yeah. kids. She loves being around. And he, she has to be with this old dickhead again. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel yeah, bad. Like yeah, I take her yeah. to parks and stuff and I, it's literally me taking her to the park and dragging her away from everything that's fun so she doesn't yeah. get hurt. Right. That's yeah. it. So How old is she now? She's 17 months. Oh, wow. Yeah. My very goodness. active, very yeah. fast, strong. That's you cool. know, yeah. It's great. But I'm just like, I just want, it's just like, ugh. Yeah. Like getting that text, I was like, fuck, man, this is the worst. <laughs> yeah, it, went, it went from, you know, we had to move this recording a couple times because this morning they were, my wife got a mammogram and they're like, oh, wait, we need to do some tests. You have to stay here. And so I'm, I dropped her off at the, at the, uh, the, the, the exam place and then was just going to pick her up in like 20 minutes and go get coffee. And she's like, I don't know how long this is going to take. And I have to <laughs> I'm moving in. <laughs> It's I'm, I'm just like, you know, I just park in the side street and I'm just like, my heart, heart is beating out of my chest. I'm like, yeah. what did they find? Oh my God. Oh God. You know, turned out to be nothing. Yeah. It's just, it's fine. It's just like, all right, let's check again in, you know, six months kind of thing. But like, what is with today, man? Uh, yeah, like, today. I mean, yeah. I will, if you want, I, <laughs> I'm not like, well, I'm ben, into it. I'm into no. astrology and today is like a big day. Is I don't, it? I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> okay. Because I don't remember. I just remember like everything I listened to, to like sort of just hear, you know, it was like the 18th. It's a big, it's just like a shift, like everything's shifting, you know, that's kind of okay. like mostly what astrology is about is like, this is a shift. Things are moving into this and that's moving into that. And you might feel this. And like, that's all that I really, I, I don't like make my decisions in my life based on astrological stuff. It's really more like a reflection of uh, myself and who I am, you know, like that's yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what I find in it. And okay. also just like, it's funny to me that people are like, oh, you think, you think where the planets are has anything to do with you? I'm like, yeah, actually I do. <laughs> like yeah. the planets are kind of important. We've spent yeah. a lot of time talking about it. But um, yeah, today's supposed to be like some, a, a big, shift and that you know mercury's in retrograde and all that stuff okay right? which is yeah, just I don't like know. shadow stuff and it's like 
just okay. kind of negative and things are difficult. That's really all. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I will say, I mean, I, anytime, you know, this kind of thing happens, it's like annoying and bad. And even, mm -hmm. you know, I got COVID, I, was t I tested positive Christmas Eve uh, visiting the oh in-laws. So I had to check into a hotel and miss Christmas. And then my family <laughs> left me a couple of days later and I'm just sitting in this fucking hotel in my wife's hometown. Like, this is great. I can't yeah, leave this room. Life is great. You know, <laughs> but it's still like, A, I'm not really yeah. getting sick. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I felt like crap and had no energy, but I never felt in danger. I never yeah. once thought, oh no, should I, you know, call an ambulance ever? So, yeah. and also at the time, my family did not have it. No one had it. No one else got it at the, at the group. And so I was like, I was grateful That's for wild. that. So it definitely, these, it's an exercise every time for me. And just like, wow, this is a pain in the ass. I'm very grateful that it's I'm just a pain in the ass. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's like ultimately you have to, you get to feel all those things, right? It's like, right. it's not denying that like, oh, my kid is sick and she, right. it's difficult and all the, yeah. you know, it's not denying that. It's just going like, oh, thank God I have a kid. <laughs> thank no, God. It's, I, 100%. You know I mean? it's like all this yeah. stuff where you're like, oh, this is, these are, and not even saying like, oh, these are first world problems, which they mm -hmm. are, but sure. just going like, thank you for my problems. You know, like my yeah. problems are helpful too, because it's helping me see the world differently. Yeah, you know? that's exactly right. I mean, we're going to back to Portland this weekend uh, to visit my my parents because they're like all about grandkid time now. Oh, all yeah, about, I bet. Like, I bet. You know, if we could just if we could somehow mail her, it'd be. <laughs> That's all they would give a shit about. But like, I, uh, you know, I, I'm like, you gotta okay, get some cool. Venture capitalists into that. app, Matt. <laughs> Yeah. If we can. Pay yeah. Some mail. kind of tech bro mail wants to turn his energies <laughs> to safe, uh, grand baby, uh, just, just uh, children transport flying through the sky, floating <laughs> yeah, from yeah, state a, to state, <laughs> a certain color, a patented color of light that we yeah. see going across. So, you know, it's extra precious. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. No, it's like, I, you know, I wor worst case scenario is what I have to watch her the next three days, which sucks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then I get to go and I have built in, you know, baby watching. Yeah, so it's totally, you know, anyway. Yeah. So what have you been doing? What have you been <laughs> up to? Um, Tell me something. I haven't seen you face to face. In, I know it's uh, been a long ass time. It's yeah. been it's been a really long time since I did this podcast, right? Yeah. It's yeah. been a minute. Like it just time goes so fast, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, mostly just been like riding through this pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like uh, trying to do that every day that you wake up yep. um and then i have uh, uh like in the middle of basically when you know we kind of thought we were coming out of it last summer yeah you know? i remember which even then i was hesitant i'm not trying to act like i knew i you know i was trying to do both i was trying to be sure. like okay let's go for it and also like mm, i don't know about this <laughs> you know right um i shot a comedy central half hour like right before delta basically Oh, and it God was so you. wild because like uh not only is what an amazing experience to get to do right uh -huh. but i flew from los angeles to new york and then it was shot in uh at the knitting factory in williamsburg so like yeah i went from la where everybody was like oh shit delta like people here were like oh this is bad this is bad lock it down again and i flew from here to there where everybody was like masks off we're 75 percent vaccinated in this borough like life is back we're doing things and it was so weird to go there and experience that while i had the, i felt like a time traveler <laughs> like yeah, yeah, i was yeah. like bruce willis and 12 monkeys like you guys don't understand it's coming wow. back it's coming back um but yeah i got to do that in the middle of that you know such a it was wow. really wild to you know, before the pandemic, if Comedy Central called me and was like, hey, we want you to do a half hour, I'd been like, hell yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. But then they asked yeah. me after I hadn't done stand up for like a year. And yeah. I was like, great, can't wait. Cool. <laughs> and it was so, it was, it was funny because it was like, it was hard. It was really hard in a way that it mm. hadn't, you know, stand up just hadn't been in a while, you know? Um, yeah. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I'm oh, like, good. I can't believe I did that with, with that yeah <laughs> you know? oh yeah no my first uh i got like a uh an offer to do a gig when we started doing like outdoor gigs it was like a yeah. headlining gig uh that this these guys called jam in the van that do like oh yeah i love those guys stuff. That's yeah such a great, great guys show. and i i did um i did this outdoor headlining show and i hadn't done a set in i don't know how many months and this is like probably near the end of 2020 20 maybe or mm -hmm. i think and so 
and it was just and it was uh, it was like sixty dollars and it's like free weed and booze for the audience <laughs> yeah. and it was like it was one of those things where it was hard but yeah. i got through it and did an hour and was like wow and i remember it, you have that feeling where you're like i can't tell if i if i was great or i sucked you know because there were <laughs> yeah. there were so many moments that were just like that went really well or yeah that didn't go as well as i thought nothing that was just oh boy i'm awful but just you know you know well, what's going on like, in your head where you're like i could have nailed that better i could have said this yeah. thing I could have, you know and, and I it felt was like just i was i lost my tuning fork for what the what right. was going on right you know it's like yeah i don't know how to i lost my i didn't lose it completely but it just it was like gone away diminished oh, my yeah. ability to read what mm -hmm. was going on and right. change and make adjustments because like when i the first shows i did i did like a headlining weekend in dc in june i think of 2021 and it felt like the way i described because i used to skateboard a lot like i skateboarded for like 10 years and it it felt like that like when i'll jump on a skateboard my brain is like kickflip dude you know how to kickflip and then my body's like we do not know how to do this anymore <laughs> like we have not done it in a really like you can try but you're not going to do it you yeah. know no. and it felt very much the opposite of that where my body felt very comfortable on stage but my brain was like i don't know what you want me to do about it yes. we haven't done this in a long time yeah it's just like that you know the repetition and it just is being like rusty mm -hmm. Yeah, one well, for me, for me, it was like the lack of um, uh, you kind of have to not care. Yes. And I feel yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, meaning you have, yeah. just have just have fun. You're, I'm here right. to have fun. And just not like be you're precious here to be, about have fun. it and all that. Stuff. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not I'm way too stilted. I'm way too yeah. precious. And, and you yeah. just like you just lose that the less you th that is why it's interesting that you bring that up because I'm really putting it together. Like coming from Chicago, there's like this very um it is it's very like masculine fraternal kind of patriarchal mm -hmm. there's one way to do this and you're probably not doing it you know and like <laughs> yeah. the way to do it is you do it as much as you possibly can and like there's also a benefit to doing that because it sure. does the thing we're talking about is like it helps you stop being precious about things it helps you fail it helps you try it helps you just like stop worrying about yeah. doing it because you just yes. do it you know right um, but yeah. at the same time, it's like, oh, I, I try to welcome that, too, because I'm like, oh, I I've I've been given this opportunity to, like, start doing stand up completely over again. We all have, you know, yeah. it's like with with knowing that I'm able to do it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm starting out from zero, except I totally know I'm capable of doing this. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's exactly right. I mean, I'm I I taped a special in October and then did roughly this the same hour the rest of the year. You know, mm -hmm. the rest of my you know I added stuff here and there, but it's like I still had this structure that I was like, you know, it's I don't want to just get out there and do and I'm still yeah. gonna do did some that of those kill jokes. you though? Because I was doing that too. Like I did that half hour and then I mm -hmm. kept doing those jokes and I was making them better. <laughs> Oh, I know. It Realizing sucks. like, oh, my God, I have this tape and it then I've sucks. now taken it to here and it's way better. <laughs> oh, watching watching the edit. I was like, yeah, I remember yeah. dates after that. I was like, I did that better. Yeah. Fort Worth. Yeah. OK. You know? Yeah. I forgot like a callback in my in my thing that oh, like wow. it totally works with it, it actually does work without the callbacks. OK. But, you know, the callback does make it better. It's always nice. People always like <laughs> that. It's a lot better because nice puzzle piece. They yeah. already heard it. Um also sure. I'll, just to say uh before I forget, the stand up special that we're talking about is going to be is up today. So Oh cool. You can actually watch it this very All right. day. Nice. February twenty seventh. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. It's on That's uh, awesome. Comedy Central's YouTube. So okay, perfect. That's I mean, talk about. You just timing. search me and Comedy Central. I think you'll find you'll find. Sure. It. Yeah. It's exactly. called a different kind of dude. I figured you'd like that, Matt. Ah, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I like a different kind of dude because it's like in my mind, I I was you know the joke thing in me was like I'm not like other guys, you know. But yes, it's just, I mean yes. But yes, but, but that's also, what my yeah. my little pitch is too on the fucking nose. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No. Because well, it's that just was. Like, what I like, wanted to call something. Yeah, I, I know. Because look, I know you. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're about. Yes. And just like uh, I would say almost everyone uh, their let's just say orientation is not everything they're about in the problem sure. with the way, um, you know, uh, uh, for want of another term, my side, you know, mm -hmm. tends to yeah. look 
at LGBTQ folks is that's their definition. That's all they talk about. Yeah. That, and it's like, that's the biggest pile of shit I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> right. You know, it's yeah. just, it, 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 it's, it's, it's not true. And it's like, right. you don't have to, it's like, okay, yeah, I guess it's something of a hook, but you know, more often than not, if you talk to someone, it's like, that's not what they want. They want to talk about well, like no. an interest and, uh, or and shoes the, or the thing too. Cause yeah. I, I think it, cause I don't disagree with you. Like what's interesting is uh, when you think about like, you know, if you're talking about like queer comics or whatever, mm -hmm. and people that have that opinion of queer comics, they're probably kind of not wrong. I'm not saying, you know what I mean? But like, Oh, there's a billion there's, examples, but there's sure. a point. The thing the the misunderstanding is um, there's a reason we talk about it because it hasn't oh, been yeah. talked about for a really, really long time. Yes. <laughs> and 100%. also like, if I don't talk about it, then it's not being talked about. And then yes. it's really weird. You know what I mean? So like, you just, it's something that you learn to talk about. And, um, and then the, I think the investigation, and this is something I think about too. It's not like I'm uh, free from this. Cause like I'm sure. a white, white person, you know, oh, yeah. that like, Oh, there's things I don't have to talk about that I get to choose right. whether I talk about them or not. And so like, that to me is like the, you know, that's just like the next step of like thinking about it. It's like, yeah, you're not wrong. We do talk about it a lot. Oh yeah. You ask yourself why someone might do that of as course. opposed to why do they feel like they have to, you know what I mean? Like, or just right. like be interested, you know? I don't know. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm uh, literally all I meant was like, you, I like your terminology better than the knee jerk joke one that I thought of. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, yours, totally. No, no, no. I far more multitudes in a, in a very cool way. I just, yeah, I do feel you know, my wife works on the other side of the business and uh, has has had, uh, you know, one, let me off the top of my head, one of the stupidest examples, because uh, there are a big thing right now in Hollywood is people yeah. who are uh, straight white males around my age that are in executive positions that are making uh, uh, choices of diversity um, and kind of shitting on, 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 and just kind of commodifying everyone and stuff. Oh yeah. You know? Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's like, my favorite yeah. was a, was a, was a, my, my wife would like, you know, she'll get off call sometimes and be like, no, I never know who this person is. I don't hear. Sure, it's yeah. like, we do have a, you know, client it, it, privilege information thing, but just like just this guy, like she pitched a, a female writer client. Um, and, uh, you know, I won't even discuss their orientation or anything, but, uh, this white executive was like, I think we have enough white women. <laughs> a white dude said yeah, that yeah, yeah. because it's of like course, in, yeah. in my in his mind, he's like, yeah, but I'm about diversity. And it's just like, yeah, you've just been given orders, Dylan. Yeah. Why do you still have your fucking job? You know, it's right. just like, yeah, it's that thing where it's like, yeah, it's it's absolutely in, important to be that inclusive. So in my mind, I could see totally. it even worse if you sat down with, uh, you know, Comedy Central's you know, guy who's, who's there or whatever. Let's just say if he was a white guy or something, and this is the worst case scenario was like river. I love your journey. Why don't you title <laughs> your special? And this is, by the way, nothing they would ever do, but like, you know, something <laughs> yeah. where it's like, you know, like and you're just sitting there like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> title it rainbow coalition or something like that. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I like, I, I, I love that title that you, that you, that you have. That's, that's cool. You know, cause you have been on this journey lately. Yeah. You know, I, yep. I've been on it lately all the time. All but the, throughout whatever, your life. You know, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's just, it's just become sure. this thing where it's, it, it's much more visualized it's now. And, a different kind you know, of dude. <laughs> different kind of dude. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I, that's it, it, that it, it kind of, I mean, it's something that I say in the special and then, you know, it's just, it, it I hadn't gotten there with the, the material at the time, but like, it's just funny to me and people are making a joke. So like, I have a sense of humor, but I love when people are like, oh, you're just like a straight white guy now. And I'm like, absolutely not. That's not how this works. No. Like, <laughs> like somebody might think that of me walking down the street, but do you mm. think I like have the lived experience of that? Like, no, just yeah. because like, I changed my name, you know, it's just, it's very funny to me how like black and white people think of these things. Of and, course. Like, it's also true. It's just not the only truth, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I it's wish people funny. would take that much more into account, especially with like, uh, you know, uh, trans women who are, you know, uh, like th there, there, there is this other part of their life yeah. that isn't as, uh, it, it isn't as simple, 
as you no, as you I I feel not. like I've always been this and now I flip a switch and it's I am right. complete. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, I think there's people that do feel that way, you know, mm -hmm. I, but I, sure. that's definitely not the people seem to think of that as like the pervading, you know, right. experience. And like, I was listening to this podcast with I think she goes by Emily St. James now, a uh, oh, yeah. writer for formerly for the AV club, and I think for Vox now, but um, yeah, just listening to this podcast and, and I hadn't, you know, like I am a trans person, I hadn't thought of it this way yet, you know, because I'm a person. Mm. And uh, so Emily St. James was talking about how hard it was for her, at, you know, as a woman, as a specifically trans woman to grow up, you know, hanging out with boys who were talking, you know, saying these horrible things about not all the time, but, you know, you're privy to this thing because you're yes. hanging out with you're boys. In the, you're in the you're in the club. And, and so, they yeah. don't know, you know, internally they're talking about her, you know, and yeah, like, wow. I just think people don't they can't slow down to have that moment and consider that they only and it makes sense because like you're coming to it from your experience which if you're like a cisgender woman then you're just like no you don't know my life and it's like yeah that's true you don't know hers either <laughs> you know yeah. like we both don't know and like we're being given an opportunity to mm -hmm. like experience the world through other people's eyes and like a lot of people are really afraid of that you know <laughs> yeah well <laughs> clearly I, I, and my theory is is not it's it's not just the 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 narrative a lot of people are saying is like, oh, you just you think it's weird. You think it's unnatural and stuff. It's like, yeah. no, you, you you're just they're just lazy. And I think we're sure. all lazy. And I think yeah. we don't want to learn new things and we don't have, want to have to stretch and grow and mm -hmm. include. And yeah. so it's just like, oh, why can't it just be? <laughs> and that's and that's that's the everything we're about right now where it's just like how many shots they're going to make us take it's like i know it's like as many i don't know man need. it changes all the time i don't know like, what to tell you I, it's I an don't illusion know what to if tell you think life stays the same all the time you it's know always like, changing it's, it's constantly changing you know 100 yeah and i but, and i get yeah. it it's like there are things to remember but uh you know uh arlo warehouser had the best term for it because i will slip up with with trans friends and use the wrong pronoun sure yeah uh, who does I, I do all the time and, sure, <laughs> it's not a sure. perfect science yeah, and People it's not mistakes. <laughs> and and Ar arlo compared it to uh how when when we're all backstage we look at we like oh turn around let me tuck your tab your tab oh yeah, out. yeah you know dude. that's all it is someone's just tucking yeah. your tab for you you know it's yeah. like so dude oh, sorry it's cool it's okay you know, know. like i got it you yeah know, it's, it's just it's all that right. like little moment of of you know vulnerability where yes. like and and you know we're taught in our society to never show that you know mm -hmm, no it's that you know to me when i use the word patriarchy i don't mean men <laughs> it's right. a it's you know what i mean it's it's way bigger than any one or group of, of course. men you know it's like it's a way of thinking that hurts everybody truly yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. like you cannot feel show weakness you cannot show oh. vulnerability like you cannot access that don't even have emotions actually other than maybe like rage you know like yeah. there there are no other emotions like love don't even think consider that you know no it's um it's weakness. all that stuff where it's just like and i love i love that comparison because it's like it is really just that simple, you know, it's mm -hmm. truly that simple, <laughs> yeah. you know, and everybody's trying to do their best, you know, that is the hard yeah. thing to remember. And like, I look, I have my, uh, like, I know that people are transphobic because it's built baked into society of all of of this stuff. And I know that people are because I am and have been, <laughs> you know, sure. it's not, it's just like, it presents itself differently in each. Oh yeah. In every person. And it's, Absolutely. it's all rooted in fear of what you were talking about, which is like, I don't want to look weak. I don't want to look silly. I don't want to look like anything. Mm -hmm. And like, we're, we care so much about what we look like instead of experiencing life and being open to something being different, you know? Yeah. I, I, I came up with the, the, a great term for it with my therapist that he, uh, I say great because it, he he lost his mind over it. He was like, "This is the coolest," you know. I <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not sitting here like it. I have a great term <laughs> that I made up, but like I I I was someone who was like, you know, I've kind of always been a a little insecure about my body, like most people. Sure. And uh, you know, when I was younger and 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 heavier, I would there were one or two times where I wore like a tank top into a pool, you know. Yeah. And I was like. I was like, the thing we never really admit is we love the fat kid with no shirt on who doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Like, we love that kid for one of another term, fat kid. You know what yeah. I mean? 
Yep. And and where that guy is just lounging around and doesn't have a T-shirt on mm -hmm. because you don't wear a T-shirt in the pool and he doesn't care, you know, yeah. Yeah. or or she. And it's that thing where and 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 I'm like, I was like, I'm just trying to be that, that fat kid in the pool that doesn't care. And the therapist was right. Alan was just like, I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. be, go be the fat kid with no shirt. Yeah. You know, so it's just I, I, it's it's kind of just that where now I love it that people can kind of wear whatever they want. And it's. You can make fun of it, but more and more you're branded the asshole you are by doing oh, that. Yeah. Whereas I mean, there was a time where there's a lot more changing. of a mob mentality where it's just like, yeah, that oh, person sure. looks horrible, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I feel, you know, like our the society or whatever is learning a little bit more of a culture of kindness. And it's taking a really long time because I yeah. bet, you know, go to other places, whatever experiences and all this stuff, it's these things are still pervasive. But I do think, you know, we're beginning to, I just think like all the, the like men in my life, specifically the cisgender men in my life, I've just been given an opportunity to be around so many guys that are like, just not what I grew up with, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just not what I grew up around seeing on TV in my actual life. And it's like, oh, it's possible so many things there's just so much more possibility now that yeah. like you're right when when the 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 whole like i'm gonna put this person down so that everybody thinks i'm cool just isn't what it used to be you know no. it's like it's not even on tv anymore if somebody does that on tv they're the villain you know oh, they're yeah. not the like i don't know like they were kind of always the villain but there was always like a little bit of a gray scale to that of like yes. yeah but they're ultimately cool though right right <laughs> you know? like ultimately they have everything they want so yeah. <laughs> i guess that's how you get the the bmw or whatever yeah yeah just treat everybody like shit. yeah it, it is i mean it does it just comes it just comes down to uh, I, who's it uh, i was listening to dana gold's podcast and he had a great point about how what he He's not that spiritual, but he just tells his daughters, he's like, the most important thing when it comes to other people is, is just empathy. If you can just yeah. keep that. And I'm like, yeah, it that's really kind of is that simple. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, that's, I, I was just listening to this book by uh, Rachel Held uh, Evans, who died in 2019 of complications of the flu, like literally right before the pandemic. Whoa. Um, and she was this... Um, sort of like evangelical Christian who, she did this amazing thing. She lived in Tennessee, I believe. And she did this, uh, she wrote a book about it, which I haven't read, but where she did, it's called A Year in Biblical Womanhood. And so she oh. did and lived out all the things that the evangelical oh. movement sort of points to, like the Leviticus stuff, all that, the Old Testament stuff of like, this is what women are supposed to be, as opposed to looking at the new stuff that was written more recently but sure, she, right. so she like lived all that stuff out she's actually like a, a very cool um just like a cool version of that person of like oh these things i believed are maybe not right like i'm questioning uh, this and and realizing that like faith is actually uncertainty as opposed to certainty you know which is like yeah. get back to all this stuff we were talking about i say all this to simply quote the bible which is love sure. your neighbor as yourself and like you cannot love your neighbor if you do not love yourself you know yeah and so you have to do that first mm -hmm. but the building of empathy is not just seeing myself in someone else but seeing someone else in me you know it's like it's yeah it's a continual thing as opposed to like, okay, well, and to go back to what you're talking about with like the str straight white cisgender guy, it's like, when we say, oh, we need more diversity, we're always talking about diverse from that starting point. Yes, the starting exactly. point is the cisgender straight white male. Well, and that's it's the not wild anything else. And that's the problem. Like you can't yeah. actually ever change it if you're always if the starting or central point stays the same. You're still looking from that viewpoint. <laughs> you're still and that looking, viewpoint alone. and that is the that's the, the that's who's operating the claw machine. You can stuff yeah. it full of whatever you want, but like we need uh -huh. a ball pit of people, you know, where yeah. everybody's yeah. in it. Everybody's mm -hmm. in it nobody's no, I, operating you know and, and it's like with it like we need a gay person for diversity and it's like that's not that diverse no. there's billions you know it's like i like right. it's like i get where you're you're coming from and you know you're not wrong in terms of how we talk about casting but it's just like are there that much of a minority of gays and because i don't really think there are you know yeah, no. <laughs> and it's also just like really um painting by numbers you know yeah. and like yeah and then and then the um the sort of the the 
the the like the ethnicity of the person or the 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 label identity of the person becomes the character yeah which is not really what any of us want <laughs> you mm -hmm. know it's like yeah we we have to transcend beyond like the whole like elaine on seinfeld being written as a man and then just a woman put in there uh -huh. is something that you could keep doing or you could go that's a great starting point <laughs> you know like yeah. we write a character and then we hire somebody for it based off of what they bring to the character and then you make the character fit with that per it's like it's it's a consistent changing creative uh -huh. thing you know and like yeah. i feel like tv just doesn't tv is very mechanical these days oh yeah and, and things are if you're not if you're not that straight white cisgender person because they we do it with women too oh, yeah. <laughs> like for oh, sure yeah. uh then your character is what you are and like yeah. it's a it's a balance and similar to the comic thing that you were talking about too where like yeah i mean i'm not going to deny it and it's also mm -hmm. not my whole thing you right. know like i yeah. also talk about baseball incessantly you know yeah. like so it's like all these things fit into that character and make it a whole person you know that's exactly right and i feel like it's almost like to use a weird analogy uh i, I i've i've always heard it, it's you know if, if they're like say you're at a party and you're there with like mick jagger he's there yeah you don't go up love to mick, and, mick. i love start, hanging out with mick you know you've been there we I've go to the same there. parties we go to yeah. the same parties <laughs> we hang out with mick but <laughs> it's like with you, mick, you know, Ronnie. <laughs> no, nothing's gonna turn him off faster than if you go over to him and go oh my fucking god i love the stones yeah what's it you know go talk to him about baseball yeah anything yeah. else something Literally you find a, a mutual interest and there you go. And it, and yeah. it's it's just like that I found with, you know, uh, uh, well-meaning, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, folks of my ilk that are just like, oh, you're gay. I read this book about, <laughs> uh, yeah, can we yeah. talk I about anything else, cis guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I always ask people on the show, uh, if before we get the calls rolling, uh, do you get asked advice? I do. Okay. <laughs> I get asked advice. Um, not as much anymore. I don't have my podcast anymore, so I don't get asked advice okay. on, on that thing anymore, but yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I get asked okay. in, in many different capacities. Cool. Well, I want to tell you like, uh, uh, you know, one of the best times I ever had was like two episodes ago where it was, we did two with me and Kyle and I oh, had yeah. to dig him out of his shell. Cause the thing about Kyle is he's got this whole stereotypical thing of like, oh, he's just a, you know, you know, guy, uncle barbecue. Boy, sure, he's a, yeah. he's a mess, but he's the thing is, he's one of the smartest guys I've ever known in his own way, mm -hmm. like incredibly mm -hmm. insightful and stuff. Yeah. And so it's I was just like, we 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 definitely didn't care and, and gave out what was pretty ridiculous advice, but it was also, you know, fun. So like, sure. Yeah, don't and, and, and not bad advice. Either. I won't be so precious just about it. Feel no. Yeah. Feel no pressure <laughs> to go either way and stuff like that. But right. Just FYI, because I have had, oh God, I had these young dudes on once. Uh, they're in a band and they're they're great. They're nice guys. But just every, it, they gave a thought to every angle and stuff. Yeah, and I was oh, kind of wow. like, guys, we got to, you know, it's like. what but, this podcast is about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> I've never, I've, I don't tell people about other, I don't know why I'm sharing all this with you, but I was kind of just like, you know, <laughs> hmm, I remember. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. It's just, we'll, just we'll so do don't. a tight 10, Matt. We'll I feel like, no, 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 no. You talk as long as you want, but. <laughs> Anyway, uh, but also everybody, it's what you say. Check out uh, Rivers' new special, King Boner. That's right. Um, yep. So King Boner available <laughs> where boners are had <laughs> <laughs> on the Boner Network. <laughs> on the Boner um, Network. So uh, okay, so I don't know what these calls are. We have three calls. Great. I don't know what's coming. Love and it. so you ready? Let's roll the first yeah, call. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey Matt, this is uh, Sterling from Nashville. I uh, I bought you that <clears throat> that beer right before your taping. Uh, hope it was good. Uh, I enjoyed the show. It was oh, great. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. He brought me beer outside. The results we, are of it. We and, had them after. Uh, They're great. You know, but my question is kind of, it's in general for both of you, but it's not really for me. It's just kind of general. It would be curious <laughs> to hear from both of you. But uh, right. Cool. How do you let go of somebody that you still have a lot of love and respect for, mm. but mm. just can't can't keep them around? Uh, I know that's yeah. super vague, um, but it seems like it would be a good prompt. But yeah, just uh, 
Take it where you want to go. Thanks. Oh, Riz, yeah. I'm going to send you too. Yeah. I'll see you. Oh, thanks, man. Bye. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> I love that at the end. That's cool. Yeah, good guy. Thank you, dude. Uh my my uh friend who uh was outside the and manager outside the the club was really liked the beer too after the show. Thanks. It was a perfect a little sweetie. four pack. That was nice. <laughs> what um, a sweetheart. Yeah, what a cool thing. Uh you know, uh I think we both have been in this situation. <laughs> why don't you uh why don't you take first sure. crack there, Riff? Um, I mean I, you know, I this is like a real thing. <laughs> I know we're like being not precious about it, but um, yeah, that's a tough question. I mean, I think mm -hmm. it's something that I've learned over the course of my life, how to do by having to do it yep. <laughs> over and yep. over and over again. Yep. And like, you just keep doing it because it is something that keeps happening because people are humans and they make mistakes and then also something that has helped me is to realize that oh people have done that with me <laughs> and i just didn't realize it because they let me go you know um and like i guess for me the thing that's really helped me is is really continually building the fact that like anything anything that goes away or like needs to go anything that's removed you know in any shape or form needed to and mm. like me trying to because i've kept people around or like stayed around people yeah because i think i can change it or something you know like if there's just something different i could do you know then then it would be different and it's like it's very self-centered on my part to think that it's all on me and it's like how do i know that that person isn't going to be better off going and doing that, th you know, something yeah, else. Yeah. And like, for me recently, I just, there's somebody that's like, they're still in my life kind of, like we've known each other for a really long time. And they're still in my life. I haven't like cut them out of my life, you know, anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. That I think has been the biggest thing is realizing it's that it's not about cutting people out of your life and, and just like, burning the bridge and slashing it and just going like, yeah. oh, I'm, this is, this is the path has diverged here yeah you know? and we're still walking but we're just further away you know mm -hmm. and like i just like rode out because they had said some things to me that i just was i was super upset by it like yeah. super upset by it and i thought there was some way that i could say something and he would get it and like i wrote out what i wanted to say to him and i read it out loud to me and that really and i realized like oh this is the first time i've ever really stood up for myself oh, wow. and i never said any of those things to that person because I said it to me and I didn't need to anymore. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's just like the things you say to me, like, it just doesn't bother me anymore because I I know myself, you know? Yeah. So that was like a super serious answer to this question. No, and I, I, no, I appreciate that. I don't want you to uh, stop yourself from doing that. I yeah, mean, of I, course. I think you, you basically nailed it. The only thing I would add is sometimes it's okay to let someone hate you. Yeah, uh, that they don't understand. That was a big one with my my therapist kind of told me and I was just like, Oh, and that's a big, that's a big mistake that I've made a lot in the past where I'm just like, Yeah, but mm -hmm. I, I want I still want us to be cool. And it's just like, yeah. it's not yeah, you can't. Uh, uh, that's not about you. That's not you got to let this person have whatever reaction yeah. they want to have to you not wanting to be around them anymore, or be with them anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, if, if that's how you feel you have you have to kind of do it. And if you kind of have to be the bad guy, you kind of have to be the bad guy. Um, and, uh, it's, it, it's gonna sound crazy, but it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Uh, I used to really, really think it does. It feels like the awfulest, hardest thing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, it's it probably not, isn't. <laughs> yeah, if, you're right. I mean, it's you know, like, it's amazing. The things that we can tell ourselves are like, Oh my God, this is my life is going to be over if this right. goes this way or this person's life's going to be over. Yeah. They're yeah, exactly. Destroyed. And like, we actually don't have that much control or power over anything. Nope. We really don't <laughs> like at all. And yeah. who am I to say that it's not for the best, <laughs> uh -huh. you know? And like, I'm like you were saying too, it's like, I, I can get really caught up in like, well, I want people to like me in a very like yeah. inner child kind of like, I want to everybody to like me and be liked by everybody. And it's like, oh yeah, I don't like everybody. 
No. So why should I expect everybody to like me? It's yeah, not, it's out, totally out of whack there. You know, one of the most freeing things I've ever heard is, you know, we worry about what people think of us, but everyone basically just thinks about just themselves. Think about themselves. It's, yeah, that's dude. such freedom to know that and go, <laughs> yeah. oh, I feel oh, so right. relaxed now. Yeah, it's such a weight off my back. And the the thing that I, I always think of in terms of, you know, back to what you're what we were talking about, you know, things are always changing and in and, and a lot of ways, so are we. With me, it was, uh, you know, Jonathan Richmond had a lyric that just, I want to say it hit me in the heart as much as it kicked me in the chest a song sure, called That yeah. Summer Feeling, where he said, do you, do you long for her or for the way you were? Oh boy. And yeah. that one just cut me down because I was like, that was, that's so many relationships I've had where I'm like, yeah, let's get back together. But this is not then and we yeah. are not us. Yeah. And you'll never have it exactly the way it was ever mm -hmm. for good or for bad. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, it's I, I, I think if you're it, it, dude, thanks for the beer and you're you seem <laughs> an awesome, dude. Yeah. Uh, but I really hope you take this with you is it like it's re it really sounds like this has to happen. So you got to kind of face it head on, talk to this person plainly and then that's it. Uh, so I uh, hope it goes OK. Call <laughs> back in. Let us know. Yeah. Um, we did we did uh, kind of go out on a limb. We don't know what the situation was at, at all, but but <laughs> he hey. kept it very purposely vague. I feel like he did. Just like and, and that was his right. That was, I love how like, he explained that it was vague. Yeah, so I, I liked good. that, too. It, it, yeah. And also, I would say, you know, something that has helped me, too, is that I've realized um, that letting people go is not just something that you do when they leave. Like you have to oh, yeah. like actually the people that you're in relationship with who are like in your life, you have to let them go too. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. if you love something, let it go. Like you literally, that doesn't just mean let it go away. That means let it go. Don't hold on to it. Cause you yeah, exactly. can't, you literally yeah. can't. You don't own I, anything. You know? I, I, I love the fact, I, I didn't know this, but I, you know, about 10 years ago, I found out that by this guy I knew who was like a huge, he knew everything about the Beatles, everything. And he was just like, it, they always uh, do. We always think <laughs> there's always one. <laughs> the the uh, Beatle Boys. There's a, yeah, there's a, he was like, he was like, the thing people don't get about the album Let It Be is it, it's not just this biblical thing of like, let this thing be a thing, yeah. let, let it be like, lo, yeah. the, and the Lord said, let it be. He's also like, just let it be. We're breaking yes. up. Yeah. Just let us, let it be, let it, let this thing go. Let mm -hmm. it be what it is. You're yeah. not going to change it. It is what it is. So let mm -hmm. it be, dude. Um, okay, let's uh, roll the next call. Hey, Matt. Huge fan, man. Um, I am a Thanks. guy in my mid-30s with a wife and two kids and uh, have been kind of struggling recently with deciding what is okay of my passions and my boyhood kind of, you know, wants and needs mm -hmm. to give up in mm -hmm. the face of having a family specifically getting a motorcycle always wanted one oh. i've ridden one a few times mm. it's amazing Tough. i want to i want to have that i want to do that it makes sense you know as a commuting vehicle or whatever but i've got kids now so yeah. my wife and i have been butting heads about it and uh, i'm not sure if i should just let it go um in the interest of being a good father and, and husband um mm. my name is zach by the way um love your stuff man you you're you're an inspiration to us all uh be really cool if i could uh, get some feedback on it hope you guys are good have a good one. Oh, what a cute man zach. yeah thanks zach <laughs> anytime i hear so mid-30s nice, so i got nice. two kids i'm like your life is together yeah Holy how did shit. you wow. i'm mid-40s i got one <laughs> a young one yeah. yeah uh matt what do you think well, as a dad, a, <laughs> I mean, I'm a child of a dad, but I, I'm not a dad. They're, so I'm they're, curious. First off, I'll say there's a reason they call them donor cycles. <laughs> uh, That's right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, look, man, I don't have a solution for you. I, You know, if you're going to get one, obviously get a helmet and cover the rest of yourself in tough, tough leather and or yeah. denim. Um, but that said. I would also say it depends where you live. I yeah, uh, I was gonna say that too. That's the, if if this guy lives in Los Angeles, my answer nope. is no. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I, like don't do that. My, <laughs> our 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 friend Matt Dwyer, uh, he's he he had a scooter, and he uh, the third time 
I had to drive over and pull him off the gr- pavement and drive him to the oh urgent care. God. I was like, you never get, I took his, his helmet and I threw it in the trash. I'm like, you you were going to leave that scooter where it is, man. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just, be, it's just all it is, is a case of blind spots. Yeah. Everyone it's not, zipping it's around not corners. So much him, you no. know, it's not always no. the motorcycle. Yes. Cause like, I believe, you know, I believe this guy, like even just the tone of his voice and the yeah. way that he's saying the it and talking man. about it, he's yeah. like a considerate, we're not talking about somebody that's going to be blowing through, you know, splitting lanes on the 405. No, no, or, no, no, no. Maybe I'm totally yeah. wrong. But, you know, even the most responsible motorcycle driver, yeah, it, you are just so much more susceptible. And I, I am somebody that rode my bike in Chicago. It is a miracle I'm alive. You know what right. I mean? Like, I was a computer uh-huh. cyclist. And, like, I, I get it. Like, I grew up around motorcycles. I wanted one so bad. And I just yeah. kept looking at those numbers. And I kept thinking about seeing the people that I saw on the ground. And it's like... It is just, it's the thing is like, you're just raising your numbers. You're like yeah. raising the possibility of, of a devastating accident. Cause like yeah. you get in an accident in a car, very different, you know? And, yeah. and you got to think too, it's like you leave the house and your wife is thinking about that, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. that's her it, journey or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, tough. I don't want to do that to somebody else, you know, like, but that's just me. And it sounds like he doesn't either. You know? there, I, like, mean, I think there are compromises off the top of my head. You have a motorcycle and you only like, you know, there are people who were like, I need to cut down on my drinking. So now I only drink a couple glasses of wine at home with my wife. That's my treat. And it's like, mm-hmm. cool. That's your little thing. So this could be something like that, where it's like, I have a motorcycle, but I only take it to this track. And there are those tracks that you can just yeah. go around and around and around super fucking fast or whatever. And if you know what you're doing, it's relatively safe. Like, you know, there's also, you know, I'm not saying do this because they're still around, but like when your kids are older and they move out, that's when you get a motorcycle when you're retired, you know, mm-hmm. like a gold wing and you and the wife go across the country, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah. It's just very tough. I'm not going to say don't do it, but it's like, I feel like we're both learning, leaning towards, man, look at the stats, you yeah, know, it's it just is, the odds, you know, Yeah, the odds. And like, mean, there's yeah. things you can do to like, I don't know. It's like, you got to believe that like not doing this thing is like not, it's not cutting you off from, it, it is cutting you off from this very specific thing you want to do. Right. But if you can yes. look at it as like, but I'm open to whatever's going to come next, you know, of like, yeah, I don't know. One of those kids is going to be into something that you didn't expect they were going to be into. And now you get to do it with them. Maybe not right now, but Uh like soon. And it might like scratch that itch. It might not even be like engine related or whatever, but like, it's just like, yeah, sometimes you got to put other people. It's not even putting other people first. You're putting yourself first because you're sticking around for your mm-hmm. wife and your children, you know, yeah, like, I mean, which that's, is just, so it's actually pretty important, you know, to be I mean, there. I, I it's think, a little yeah. like, there's a reason why cigarettes always look so cool. They're dangerous. Same yeah. Thing they're really dangerous. <laughs> the motorcycles would not be as cool as they are if they were safe. Like that's just how we yeah, look at life. Yeah. I mean, like the reason why motorcycle gangs were born is post-World War II. Vets were coming back and some of them missed the action. They missed yeah, the juice. I mean, I and know. so they, they just, they felt like they discovered motorcycles and started riding real fast on highways. Mm-hmm. And we're like, wow, danger. I missed this. And it's like, you know, we're all built differently. Some people crave that kind of thing, but it's still danger. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah. so I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's tough. It's tough with a family, man. I, I really wish we had a concrete answer, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I really I, don't. I vote no, give it, give it time and look at something else that, uh, the term I've been using a lot is blows your skirt up. (laughs) Um, you know, whatever, you know, uh, you know, gives you the thrill is how I feel. So maybe look for something else. Maybe like a Honda mini trail. You just drive it around in your backyard. That's (laughs) what I used to do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, totally. (laughs) It's about travel, you know, look at fast cars. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Not the same. Go karts. Those Thank you. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Good parts are so fun. <laughs> yeah. um, but thanks for the kind words, man. Really appreciate you. Uh, okay. So are you ready for our last? Oh, call? yeah. Ready for okay. three. Here we go. All right, Matt. What is the best way to get rid of gas when you're on a date and the only bathroom <laughs> is adjacent to the room that you're hanging out in? Thanks again. 
Oh no, I need the answer to this one. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough. Ooh. I don't I mean get I rid don't of gas and the only rid of, there's only one way to get rid of gas. Is there no I mean there's got to be like a um exhaust fan in this bathroom, you know, right? Right. Light a match. Uh yeah, light a match. Run yeah. that exhaust fan. Yes. I don't know, exactly. can you be like Oh, I forgot. I, I have a call. I just got to check into work or something. <laughs> like my a friend of mine is like a, um he like installs servers at like a high level. Oh um, sure, okay. And so there's there's this. I don't know what this guy does for a job, but I'm sure you can make this up. <laughs> the next time yeah. you got the toots on a date, um, sure. and you could just be like, oh, I have to check in for my uh, like they call it like a heartbeat check or like a heart rate check for like the oh. health of the servers or whatever oh okay and, and it also doubles as like big brother checking to make sure that you're working all all of your life oh, uh sure. but like you could t make up something like that that you have to just like step outside you could rip a couple farts that's I also that's a... it, if you gotta step outside make sure you do it like give your body the time to do it don't push it because <laughs> you don't yep. want that result on a yes. date yes. so let it happen on its own you, uh -huh. it's, you could have more time than you think you can yes. get back in after the call and then after the gas is done wait for a second so that you don't pull it in with you as you go back in the room <laughs> that's great advice that's great <laughs> advice it's yeah just find a way to leave the house or apartment i say i like your call idea yeah but i also uh i would also pitch oh i left my wallet in my car Mm -hmm. <laughs> something it's like you can't wait it's yeah, on the seat yeah. next to my next to the driver it's in the passenger seat i got it you know it's yeah, a thing I where left it's it like, sitting out i just don't want to i'm sorry i'll I'm be so thinking sorry. about it all night and i really want to be present with you yeah I, i'll one. be a lousy a kisser if i yeah. don't run out to the car right now yeah <laughs> it's all just i can some... think about i just gotta go get it real quick <laughs> and that's an under and the thing is when things get more serious you can be like i lied i had to let out <laughs> a, a terrible stink ghost <laughs> You know, it's like it's and it'll be funny. And it's that's to me, that's a 100% that's acceptable lie. Yeah, man. That's I, fine. 100%. And I yeah. it's it's a it's a lie that I would just hang on to for the rest of my life. I wouldn't need to. Doesn't doesn't Kyle call them poop contractions? I wouldn't need to tell anybody why, my poop contractions, you know, <laughs> <laughs> something like turd contractions or something. Yeah, like that. That, yeah, it's probably turd. I probably heard turd. It, but, probably turd. Yeah. If it's probably Kyle, turd. it's turd. <laughs> yeah, that's more. That's more his brand. But yeah, sure. if you, I mean, that's just you got because I feel you. Like if the bathrooms, honestly, if the bathrooms in the same house, which it is, because it's a bathroom. Yeah, you're really running the risk of it perfect because you never know how bad it's going to be and it's usually uh -huh. worse than you think yeah <laughs> so and like, like you definitely have to go outside yeah god forbid this person's like uh like where are you going like i have to go to the bathroom like okay hurry up i have to go too and you're like yeah you're like son of then a they just, then they you have just to walk, fake go in there they but walk then, into the yeah but then they go in, they one, walk into your cloud and it's their thought yeah. is not going to be like he went in here to fart to get away from me it's just like he oh he took, took a, a dump in my house <laughs> yes which also i would just say generally as a society we need to get over oh, like yeah. our poop judgment like people yeah. have to poop like who cares i poop I, freely and openly in public yeah, bathrooms. that's what I, they're for i have a friend <laughs> who i i mean my heart goes out to him he doesn't he, he doesn't sound like i'm making a stupid joke he literally does not have a colon and so <laughs> oh he, you, you i know it sounds that, like right. a joke I right i you but told me it's he, not a joke and i still he, laugh that's fine it's ridiculous. but he it's like it's one of those things where it's like if he has to go he has to go he there's no go. Yo, yeah. you know what i mean there's yeah. there's no uh like you know it's just like i have to go to the bathroom right now right now yeah. right now and so yeah, yeah, yeah. there we it have is to and get it's like, over these puritanical ideals yeah. that no and one i never has i never really had a, a big hang up about that too much but like he and i were on the road at one point together and it was just like we were driving to, to a gig and he's like you got to pull over at that <laughs> yeah. gas station i'm like i'm on it because okay, i knew his dude. deal you know yeah 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 he's open about it we but, should all be that way really 100 yeah, so bad to hold it in it's so bad for you oh yeah it's terrible <laughs> terrible we need to stop with the poop shaming for yeah sure. no more puritanical yeah turditanical maybe i don't know whatever <laughs> yeah, working exactly. on it i'll work it out <laughs> exactly so rev this was great yeah this was thank, so much fun thanks Matt. for thank coming you for on me what a bunch it, of great calls yeah those are really also, solid i just gotta say like i would except for the last one it was gas um that's a great joke Matt. What?
<laughs> I, you didn't hear it. You said they were all really solid. And I said, except for the last oh, one, it was gas. I didn't even catch it. It's, just so it's a little stupid. science joke. Um, nice. I really, really feel for the guy that wants the motorcycle. Because I, I don't know that I, it's like, I get it, dude. I yeah. get it. I get it. I get yeah. it. But oh, we grow I, up sometimes, you know? I will. I there's a there's a comic who shall remain nameless who uh, would always ride these just beautiful beautiful bikes into uh, you know into the, the comedy store and he had a whole bit about um, someone like it was Jay a Leno guy, right a guy but yeah it was Jay Leno <laughs> yeah famous now I would say it was Jay I don't know him but like uh, they they uh, they had a bit about like a, a dude going um, oh I'd love to get one of those you know get one of those nice uh, motorcycle but like i got a wife and you know how it is and he's like his bit was like no i don't it's my bike <laughs> yeah, Fine. yeah yeah you know what i mean I do. but that guy got in an accident and had to give up his motorcycles Oof. so it's like yeah dude even the person making the joke about how that guy might feel about himself is yeah, like yeah yeah i can't Still. have this anymore man it's too dangerous yeah. and it's la you know yeah so, yeah la is just a nightmare. yeah but yeah i, I definitely felt for him too but yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so is there anything you want to plug? I besides mean, besides the special? Yeah. If you haven't listened to my album, it's a, a nice little moment in time. I recorded it at the uh, Comedy Works in Denver. Didn't intend for it to be an album. It's a lot of fun. Nice. Uh, that's out. It's called pu uh, Pull Yourself Up by Your Bootleg. And then my Comedy Central thing is out today. So you can check that out. It's a different cool. kind of dude on Comedy Central's uh, website or YouTube or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not playing on TV, but you'll, sure. you can find it, I bet. Well, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to be doing shows in March and stuff. So I've got my website, riverbutcher.com and on Twitter and Instagram, it's at Riv Butcher. Nice. <clears throat> All right, bud. Well, thanks for coming yeah, on, man. This is really oh, awesome. Thanks for uh, having me. I'm so glad it worked out. It's so good. Yeah, to me see too. You. you, you, you too. And you have to, you got to meet Rose. We got to like get together oh, yeah. in, in real life. Yeah. So. Whenever it's like safe and feels okay. That's true. Super yeah. Like, it. uh, I'm, uh, we're, we're all, we're all vax and stuff. We've all had it. So, but nice. like, I'm not going to yeah. be like, come to my house, you know, or anything <laughs> saying like that. But like, yeah. you know, next ne next time we're all going to like a mutual park or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that sounds that. great. So that this RV awesome. can't wait to meet that RV. You know? There you go. Right on. <laughs> yeah. All right, Matt. Thanks all so right, much buddy. for having me, dude. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Good times. Check out River's new special and check out their album. Uh, if you have any advice you need from me or any of my many guests that are coming up, just call right now. Don't mess around. Actually call. Leave me a message at 323-763-0228. Again, 323-763-0228. And thanks. This Might Help with Matt Bronger was created and hosted by me, Matt Bronger. Produced by Outer Circle Media. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcasts.